Greetings, one and all, and welcome to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and welcome to hopefully a very, very brief missile tutorial. This tutorial will aim to teach you the very basics of creating your own missile system to target and destroy various types of enemies. We will not be getting into much detail about m most of the things covered, we are only going to be outlining the very basics to ensure that a missile system works and how to actually set it up with your AI to make it an, an automatic weapon. Because I've been asked about this for quite some time and honestly I'm not really one normally for tutorials but I think this is quite an easy one honestly. And with that let's get started. So the missile system, honestly my favourite weapon system in From the Depths. To start off with you will want a missile controller. This is the the main block in the missile system. Like most systems in From the Depths, there is a main block which you then attach attach other blocks to to make a multi-block system. This multi-block system will function as the weapon system. So we're going to go ahead straight away, turn off mirror mode because you don't need two of these, and put down the missile controller in a lovely shade of really foul green. Let's put that to normal instead, shall we? There we go. And then just keep it on normal. So we have the missile controller. Not much use on its own, it must be said. So we're going to go ahead, put down some connectors. These can connect directly to the missile controller. If you're unsure if they are connected, simply mouse over them and they will say connected to missile controller, giving the ID as well. After that, all you need to do is go ahead and place down all the other parts, which is really simple and easy. I lie sometimes. So, the next main thing you're going to want is the missile launch pad. These can either attach directly to the missile system itself. Please bear in mind that you need the little arrow on your block to be facing upwards because, well, this is going to hit your own ship unless you're unless you intentionally want a horizontal launch, which of course you can, that's absolutely fine, but in this case we have a little green barrier around it because we're the good guys. Look, there's the evil reds on both sides because they're an enemy and enemies are normally dictated as a red. So we put these down, let's put down four here and leave it at that. So we have the basic controller, we have two connectors and we have the two launch pads. All fairly simple, all fairly nice. We will then go ahead and do the missile blocks. Once again, these need to be facing upwards or the direction you want them to go. If you try to put one down like this, first of all it simply won't, but if it did somehow work it would be very, very messy in the end result. So we're, so we're going to put, to put on mirror mode here by simply pressing N in, in the correct position just to speed things up and we're going to create a Let's say a five high weapon. Did I just accidentally swap my cursor around? Yes, I did. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. And you will be given an automatic missile regardless, which is always nice and good. You can use these to kind of figure out the very basics. And yes, you can build like this with one edge facing the one way, then the next edge facing the other way, it still works. So right now this thing will fire, and if we have a quick look on the side, it has all the basic stuff needed to actually do pretty decently. This will hit the target, so that's fantastic, but we'll do a bit of tweaking beforehand. Now we do want this automatic, but we don't want it to fire just yet, so how to do that? We're going to want, actually no, it can fire because we have no ammo on board of this lovely tutorial block, so it will simply fire once. So we put down the weapon controller. This weapon controller will now change to saying controlling one weapon. It needs to be near the missile controller because the missile controller, once again, is the main block. So there we go, we've got a connection. This can control this as long as the, the weapon controller is attached to a mainframe. Now you could always put a mainframe next to the controller, also found in the AI section, but normally that's not going to happen. That's in a perfect world if the weapon system is next to your mainframe. Of course you can have multiple mainframes on a ship and actually it's encouraged, but sometimes for simplicity's sake, let's say you've got into all this stuff and you want your where are you? You want your target prioritization to only target certain types of enemies, etc, etc. It's a lot easier to simply do one. So let's say that's the case. AI, 
you, you go into the wireless transmitter, you make sure that the transmitter is connected somehow to the, to the mainframe. Once again, like many blocks in this game, it will give you a warning to say, connected to mainframe, so that's lovely. You then go over to your local weapons controller and you put in the wireless receiver found next to the transmitter. Now this will fire straight away, by the way. Go! There, let's actually follow the missiles. There they go, happily reaching their target, and take that, you sad face. There we go, a lot of wood destroyed. Everything's fantastic in the world. Except for, of course, we have no ammo. Hurrah for that. Because we're going to get into a few more things. Now, if there was an ally nearby, there's a very good chance that missile would have rammed straight into it and thus destroyed it, or at least hurt it quite a bit. So I'll, I'll, I'll get into these very briefly. Identify friend or foe. You can connect them to there. There we go. You can connect them to the missile launch pads or to the missile uh, connectors or the actual... Actually, no. Can you connect it to the... Yes, and you can connect it to the controller itself. Actually, let's just double check that quickly because I don't normally do that. So, you can connect it there. Yes, you can. Excellent, fantastic and wonderful. So we have a connection made. The next thing we want is a staggered fire. This is because missiles tend to detonate each other in negative ways if they all are shot at once. If you do have a swarm missile, and we'll get into that in a little while, where all of the missiles are fired at once, it tends to be better to make sure that each, miss each missile goes for a different part of the ship. If you simply want them to go for weak points and other points by themselves, make sure that you have staggered fire. Once again, check it's connected, and then you can press Q to change the delay between 0.0, .0 all the way to 0 0.5 seconds, so two will fire per second as opposed to all of them at once. And the identify friend or foe, you can guess what that does. So, the, the missile itself. We currently are using an infrared seeker. Now this is an important part of the missile as this is how it will actually figure out where the enemy is and close in on them. It will tend to go for hot sections, where are you infrared seeker, and thus is very liable to be a little bit derpy if the enemy is using any kind of flares or a lot of anti-missile manoeuvring. This can be a little bit silly. And that's normally honestly okay. I do prefer using this system, but there is a different system we're just going to very briefly touch on. So if we have the connector, we put it all the way here, because why not? You can then use the laser emitter. So as you can see, it's already locked on, and it's trying to make sure the next volley of missiles go to this enemy. The big benefit of this is that, like I said before, it doesn't get distracted, although this makes it almost impossible to use a swarm missile because they're always going to go to the point of the laser. You can, of course, make sure the laser has different priorities going with target um, prioritization, but that's, again, something for a different day. But we're not going to be using that, but um, just to show you what that is... Where are you, laser thingy mabobby? I know you're here somewhere. This really shows how little I use this. There we are, the laser designator receiver. You simply replace that with the infrared which is normally here. Nice and simple, and that ensures that the missile goes after the laser. But of course, we don't really care about that too much today, so that can go away. Bye-bye. Other elements you need to understand which will make sure this kind of missile works. If you were to fire this missile and it did not have the one turn element, this missile would simply go straight into the air and never find the enemy, because the infrared seeker does not see everything. As you can see, it has a 120 degree forward facing field of view. This means it kind of looks in front of it to try and find its target, and a little bit to the sides, as you can imagine. However, if you're firing it directly upwards, unless you're against a flyer which is very close to you, it's not going to be finding the target. What the one turn does is allow the missile to have one automatic turn towards the enemy once it's first fired based off where the AI local weapon controller is currently aiming. So if you're aiming, let's say, to that way, it will fire that way. And that's why I was kind of surprised because normally the one turn element isn't actually included on these ships by default. So that's pretty cool. Fragment Warhead, it does, what it, it does what it says on the tin. It has a very small explosion followed by a load of little frag shots, which can be devastating. The default is a cone angle of 180 degrees. It goes everywhere. 
but you can lower this to whatever you want. If you have it on 1, it's like a sniper. If you have it on about 15, it's more of a very short-range shotgun. These are actually fantastic and my favourite type of missiles. So much show... So, rather, we're going to go with double fragment, because why not? Honestly, miss, um, explosives and then fragments do just as well. I like to have it something like this. Have a lower, but then a less lower, less lower, less lower, because it kind of acts really cool. Another thing you can do with the fragment warheads is use the... Where are you, you lovely little thing? If I'll find it, I'll tell you. There we are, the proximity fuse, which honestly is really cool when you're using the fragment warheads, because it essentially means the missile will explode before actually touching the enemy ship, thus showering it in the fragments. This can be good in certain situations, but it can also be very weak against shields. Missiles, by default, will go through a shield and do damage to the sweet metal within. However, with the proximity fuse, there is a chance you will detonate before Hitting, before going through the shield, essentially meaning that the fragments get caught up in the shield, thus doing no damage, unless that is your intention. But this can cause some really effective things, so we're going to add that, because we don't need target, uh, target prediction guidance, because we're not after anything really moving. This is really good versus flyers, which have a very... Uh, n n n not just flyers, flyers and ships which have a very steady movement rate, not very erratic. It can guess where the enemy is going to be and go for the intercept point rather than simply following behind the vessel. So very good against fast, very predictable enemies, although it can cause massive issues if the enemy is a little bit mental, which a lot of enemies are, so I don't normally use that, but against certain enemies it is really good. But for now, we're going to have the proximity fuse. Once you're happy with your missile, you can simply do a sign design to all same length missiles, and each one of these missiles will be converted. The next step is understanding where the fins go. Now, fins are affected about where they are on the missile, so we're going to simply put down the fins at the back, because a lot of people, including myself, agree that's one of the best places for them. So, at the moment, we have no fuel, so we're changing those two fins there for fuel. Each fin you add makes the missile more maneuverable in the sky. It can turn on a dime if you have... The a majority of fins, but of course it does take up space for your other components, such as warheads, your one-turn elements, and of course fuel tanks. So this is the last thing we're going to get into today, which is the actual thrusters themselves. You have the short-range thruster, the most simple and, well, default thruster there is. It burns for a maximum of 20 seconds, it's quite quick, and ultimately it tends to get you where you need to go. The alternative, and the actually only other alternative, is the variable thruster. Now the variable thruster is pretty cool actually, because you can set it to various settings. By default, it's fairly close to a short range thruster. However, this thing will burn forever and burn through all of your fuel. You can also change the thrust per second, which means you can have it ridiculously quick or ridiculously slow. The slower it is, the more fuel efficient it is, and the further it will travel, the faster it is. Well, you can imagine, very fast plus very agile equals a very happy missile indeed. There is also the thump ahead. Actually, yes, we'll, we, we will cover this quickly. The thumper head, when it collides with a construct, will impart kinetic collision damage. Essentially, the bigger your missile and the faster it's going, the more damage this will do. And it's actually really effective. It can cut through metal, this thing. It's surprisingly good. And sadly, though, this does need to go on the front, meaning that you can't use the infrared seeker. You have to use the laser designator, which can actually go anywhere on the missile, whereas the infrared has to go on the front, so does the thumper. We won't get into Lua today, because that's all to do with coding, and something which I think is very complex, and something I don't really enjoy using. So, I, it, it's out of my experience range, I would rather not touch something I'm not 100% comfortable with. Fine, actually no, another finally, sorry for all the little extras, but this does bear talking about, and that is the... 
You know when you're dyslexic, this is a load of fun trying to find the right element. Camera for infrared seekers. This is the thing I was talking about earlier. This will allow you to have swarm missiles. So let's quickly replace this fuel tank for a short while. You can have it to aim at a center of mass. You can have it to aim at shields, and you can have it to aim at a particular random block. If you have this on every single missile, even if it's at the same value, your missiles will go completely random at the enemy and thus not cause issues with each other, such as explosions taking away the fragment of another explosion, one explosion detonating a missile a little bit early, all sorts of stuff like that. But of course, that's only if you want to fire them all at once. Although, honestly, this is good even if you're firing them all at the same time. So even if you're firing them as a staggered shot, this can do a lot of collateral damage. So we'll put the, but for now, we'll, we'll simply put the fuel back, we'll have them all as it was, we're going to have a delay on the shots, and that looks like a pretty okay missile. Other things, of course, you can just play around with to your heart's content. So, do we want to do anything else? Let's change the variable thruster back to the regular short range for now. Uh, the, f the proximity fuse will simply change to fins. Actually, no, we'll leave it as the proximity fuse just so we can see how it does. This will be a little bit... Uh, it's not going to be very agile, to be perfectly honest, but it's going to pack quite a nasty punch with the double warhead and the proximity fuse. And that is really that. That's going to be a decent missile. And again, just mess around with what you prefer. Let's just put down some ammo barrels. As you can see, they're now firing on a delay. One's gone off some random direction because I was accidentally controlling it. And let's just wait until the next shot actually shoots. There we go. And... Kaplow! As you can see, it does a fair bit of damage in, in comparison with last time, because we've doubled the warheads, and the proximity fuses, like I say, can be really nasty. Although they can cause some serious lag. So if you're going to be using a lot of missile systems, and your computer specs aren't particularly great, you may want to simply hold off a little bit and use non-proximity warheads. But that really is that. You can mount these on turrets, and you simply do the exact same procedure, except for the AI will be attached to the turret segment itself, not the missile controller. So, yep, yeah, that's that. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope it's been helpful. We've just killed the AI of that ship, and thus successfully defeated it. It should now start firing at this enemy over here. Uh, yep, it has found it. There it goes, and the new missiles are on their way, and honestly, they'll probably hit, hit the water because the AI is underwater and missiles are a little bit stupid, unless you use lure. And the fact that they're short range, as you can see, didn't quite make it. Only a little bit of fuel left. Oh well. As I was saying, though, if you have found it useful and enjoyable, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out my channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see more of on the channel. And with that, if you are if you are new to the channel, then I would highly recommend going onto my videos and having a look at my other From the Depths content, where I do a Let's Play, where I make things like this. Thank you again for watching. And goodbye.